In this video, I'll be summarizing a very high yield biochemistry pathway, and that's collagen synthesis. As we go through this video, I'll summarize all of the steps in order of how collagen synthesis works, pointing out the high yield information, and giving you some useful mnemonics so that your brain can memorize everything that it needs to know to do well on USMLE and Comlex. Let's dive right in. Step number one is translation of something called pre-pro collagen. This is also known as collagen alpha chains. This occurs in the cytoplasm. If you're taking your exam and you see pre-pro collagen or the term collagen alpha chains, the test writer is referring to the same thing here in step one. Now, as you'll note, the most important residue on pre-pro collagen is glycine. In addition to glycine, you can also have proline or lysine. So sometimes this is written as glycine-x-y, and all that means is that you're always going to have some amount of glycine, and then the x or the y is typically the proline or the lysine. The big takeaway from this step of collagen synthesis for your exams is to know that the most important structure is the glycine residue. And so if you're taking your exam and you get a question that asks you which of the following best predicts the structural integrity of collagen, or which of the following is the most important residue for collagen, the answer is going to be glycine. Glycine, glycine, glycine. Don't forget that. So step one, we translate pre-pro collagen in the cytoplasm. There's always going to be glycine and then proline or lysine in addition to that. In step two, you undergo post-translational modification. And this occurs in the endoplasmic reticulum. Specifically, we hydroxylate the proline and the lysine residues via the enzyme known as hydroxylase. It's very important to note that this step requires vitamin C. You absolutely need vitamin C in order to hydroxylate proline and lysine residues. So again, step two, post-translational modification occurs in the endoplasmic reticulum. Specifically, what's being modified here is hydroxylation of proline and lysine required requiring vitamin C, and the enzyme here is hydroxylase. Step three, lysine hydroxyl groups get glycosylated, which is a fancy way of saying that sugar gets added on. And specifically, it's glycosylated with galactose and glucose B. Step four, procollagen is formed. And what happens here is that three left-handed helices, which is the plural version of the word helix, twist into a right-handed coil okay so i'm going to pause for a second we've talked only about four steps so far step one we have translation step two we have hydroxylation step three we have glycosylation and step four we have pro collagen formation and i'm going to be a little bit more specific now so step one we have translation of pre pro collagen with glycine residues being the most important Step two, we have hydroxylation of proline and lysine residues requiring vitamin C. Step three, we have glycosylation of the lysine hydroxyl groups. And step four, you have the twisting of these three helices forming procollagen. Now, when you're taking USMLE or Comlex, the test writer likes you to know that in step one, glycine is the most important residue. And in step two, the lysine and proline residues are the ones that get high hydroxylated and it requires vitamin C. That's not to say that steps three and four aren't important, but steps one and two are generally more the target of the exam writer's questions. And so here's my mnemonic to help you memorize the important bits of information. Instead of saying translation, I want you to say translysin, which helps you remember glycine, glycine. It helps you remember glycine residues for translation in step one. And in step two, instead of saying hydroxylation, say hydroxylysine. Instead of hydroxylation, say hydroxylysine. C for requiring vitamin C and lysine for specific hydroxylation of lysine and then in parentheses and proline residues. If you can remember translysin and hydroxylysine, That'll help you remember which steps require, you know, which things or which steps have the certain important residues. So really, really important. The other thing that I want to point out here is that you can get the manifestation of disease if you have a problem in some of these steps. 
So in step two, if you don't have enough vitamin C as that required cofactor, you get scurvy. And in step three, if you don't adequately glycosylate those lysine hydroxyl groups, you get osteogenesis imperfecta. So I put those here just to help you remember that. And I have another video on my channel about the different types of collagen that you can see if you want to learn more about individual types of collagen. But in any event, let's keep going and move on to step five. So in step five, pro-collagen undergoes exocytosis, so it moves out into the extracellular space. Really nothing important to know here other than we're just doing exocytosis. Then in step six, disulfide-rich terminals on either side of the three helices are cleaved, and they're cleaved by something called collagen peptidases. When this happens, you form tropocollagen tropocollagen. So disulfide rich terminals are cleaved forming tropocollagen. So you cut off the ends and you have that nice chunky middle part. And then finally, the last step is that you have an enzyme called lysyl oxidase, which depends on copper and it covalently crosslinks all of the tropocollagens that were just made in step number six. And when it does that, it forms collagen fibrils. So it establishes these, these, establishes these covalent bonds, cross-linking all of those middle chunks of tropocollagen from step six, and it cross-links them into collagen fibrils. So just as I showed you in steps one through four, for steps five through seven, understand that the broad step, in step five, we have exocytosis, in step six, we have cleavage, and in step seven, we have cross-linking. Again, being a little bit more specific, if I were going to summarize this for you, I would say in step five, we have exocytosis of the procollagen. In step six, we have cleavage of disulfide-rich terminals, which forms tropocollagen. And in step seven, we have covalent cross-linking of tropocollagen into collagen fibrils. Lastly, let me give you some mnemonics to help memorize, again, the important bits of information that you should pull out of each of these steps. In step six and step seven, you don't really need to worry about step five, but in step six, instead of saying cleavage, say sleevage with two S's. And those two S's remind me of disulfide being what's cleaved. So sleevage, I know I'm, think, I'm talking about cleavage, and then what's being cleaved? the disulfides, and that's why there's two S's for di-S or disulfide, because it's, again, it's those disulfide terminals on either end of the procollagen that gets cleaved, and that forms tropocollagen. Then in step seven, instead of saying cross-linking, say cross-lonking, and the LO for lysyl oxidase. That'll help you remember that it's lysyl oxidase that's doing the cross-linking of those tropocollagens to form the collagen fibril. The last slide that I'll conclude with is you have some diseases here that you need to know. So in step six, if there's a problem with cleaving those disulfide rich terminals, you can get Ehlers-Danlos syndrome. And then in step seven, if you have a problem with the cross-linking, you can still get Ehlers-Danlos syndrome and you can also get Manx disease or Menke's disease. I, I honestly don't know how you pronounce it. But Ehlers-Danlos can form uh, due to a failure of step six or step seven. And you also get Manx disease if you can't cross-link in step seven. So that's collagen synthesis. That's really all you need to know. It's not super complicated. If you can kind of break it down into those broad steps, pulling out the very important bits of information, using my mnemonics, remembering the diseases that can take place, this is more than adequate for you to sit for USMLE or COMLEX. So I hope this, that this was helpful. Best of luck. Keep up the great work.